In several of our videos, Jack recommends the deep soak for deep cleaning a carriage using Marvel Mystery Oil. And although we've referenced it briefly, some people need a little bit more help with that. So in this video, he's going to go into more detail about the Marvel Mystery Oil Soak. Okay, we're on a fact-finding mission. What is that I see in that tub of Marble Mystery Oil? Ah, it's a carriage, it completely submerged. Poor little thing isn't drowning, but it is soaking. This is the deep soak that you hear me talk about all the time. It's when we put a carriage down into a vat of Marble Mystery Oil, completely covering it. And we even do that with garter carriages. I'm sorry about the light. We're getting some reflection here from the window, but there's the surface of the oil. You can probably see the pink on my hands, and there's the carriage. We moved over to the table because what we want to show you is that when the mystery oil has done what it's going to do, you get little pink blobs all on the inside of the machine. And what that is is places where the old oil and grease was and the mystery oil has floated it around and now we can see exactly what we need to clean. A lot of the nastiness has just floated on out and sunk to the bottom of the vat of oil. Yes, it has. And you can see under... So basically everywhere we can see pink is where the mystery oil is and we're going to use our LPS-1 to start from one side, standing it up, and wash all that pink down into our pig blankets. PIG is actually the name of the company that makes these absorbent pads. And I'm going to try to do this without getting it all over my camera operator. That'd be good. She, she doesn't like it that much. She camera's not nuts about it either. Well, that's true. So I'm aiming away so you can't see, and I can see. Now, while you're doing that, explain to people how it works with an electronic machine. Oh, yes. When you, when you soak your garter carriage, you're going to have circuit boards inside of there, and the oil isn't doing the circuit board any good. However, the LPS-1 isn't hurting it. So what we do is, after we get them out, I use a contact cleaner made by CRC. Lower it. There we go. And I understand that at Granger they've changed part numbers on me without asking me. What is that about? But I will we'll post the new part number. But this is as a soon Q as we can locate it. Yeah, this is QD, which is quick drying contact cleaner. And the the most important thing is what it tells you right here. It says quick drying leaves no residue. So that means you can use it on that circuit board, and once you've closed up the garter carriage again, then it's not going to hurt anything for it to be in there. It's already dried, it hasn't left any residue, and then we can go ahead and clean and lubricate after we've done that. Yeah. Okay, here we go. We're good. A lot of these carriages require hand cleaning, and I just want you to see the difference from the picture that you saw when we started and when I do this wiping off. And you'll see how easy it is to get the mystery oil out of there. But because these keys have a tendency to stick, that's why we use that mystery oil bath. Otherwise, you have to take this entire assembly apart, all the levers out, all the springs out, for to manually get in there and clean. And again, I will tilt this up just a little bit. You can see these little pink globs. Right there is one of them. And we're going to get those out. So now, the mystery oil bath saves hours of work, but it is not the whole job, right? No, it is not. Here's a good little guy for you to see. Can you see him? Yep. That's the kind of thing that floats right. that out floats and gets out. loose. And it's you... sitting right out here. Now, again, can you see a good picture of that on the camera? Mm -hmm. Now, turning away so you can't see what I'm doing. No, it's just so I won't get it on. My we can't. We really can't see. He's spraying with the red straw, the LPS one, and we can see it coming through the back a little. He's washing everything out with it. 
this um, process uses a lot of chemicals. It is not it cheap. It does. It, the, the LPS-1, this is my main use for it because it's a good foaming lubricant. However, there is no substitution. Can the camera see my little puddle yeah, right there? Yeah, we can. I You're guess. generous with it, I know. Now here's what, it, it, you can see what I'm doing. I'm turning it the other direction, and now I'm going to wash down the other way. And, yeah, this is the only way to really, really get one clean without a complete and total disassembly. Which I will do that if you send me one and it needs it, because something's not right, it's bent, it's broken, a spring is off somewhere. This is I'll pretty disassembled. It. Yeah, but I'll go into it. It, you know, okay. that's not a problem. Now, all right now we have videos on taking the carriages apart, including the garter carriage. This is specifically talking about the Marvel Mystery Oil. We had a friend write and say, "You mean you put the carriage in a bath?" Yes, we do. And it's what about four inches deep in there? Yes, it is. It um, doesn't actually have to be for this style of carriage, but for some of them. Right, for the for the carriages with the card reading towers and for the um, garter carriages, it needs to be pretty deep, about so. So three and a half to four inches. The roasting pans work really well, but we won't tell them that secret that we found them cheap at the Goodwill. And that that's <laughs> what I use when I go on my uh, trips. But you'll notice the workings here. We've had several friends that could not get their carriages off because... They could not get this mechanism here to release the carriage. but CR was stuck, in other yeah, words, on a brother. But if you'll notice, it should be spring-loaded. It should snap back when you get near the position. So while, we're, while you're in here cleaning the mystery oil out right. and removing the last of the fuzz and any pink goo, right. you double-check all the action That's right. when you're doing one for right. somebody else right. or and for me. Yeah, and you can see exactly what I'm doing here. It's no mystery. This stuff goes in everywhere I can get it. Simply because, if you'll look, it's a foamy spray. And it's dense enough that it'll float out the crud, the rest of the crud, that the marble mystery oil has loosened. And so it's just sitting there. And some of them have only a little bit, but some of them have quite a lot. This particular carriage had a lot of fibers in it. It's was used in production knitting and it just had a lot of fun. Well, and they'll build it. up over time. There's nothing you can do to keep it from happening. And look at that thing drip. That's <laughs> not a problem. When you get them back from me, quite often I put them in a plastic bag. And I usually tell people, so I'll tell everybody now, knit with some Scrap yarn for a little bit. This isn't going to hurt the yarn. We let it um, drain for at least 24 hours, but usually the first few passes, right. even so, a little crud comes out and gets on your bed, and you just must wipe it off, like what he's showing you yeah, there. Yeah, see what the camera it should be showing you, little black smudges. Uh -huh. and, and the thing is that all of this is loosened up, and it comes right off because of the deep yeah. soak. And Jack removes every speck he can see, but a little bit more works out as the levers work. Yeah, as you as you go through the paces and change. That's why Catherine always does a nice, intricate swatch when I finish a carriage so that we know. We put it in every position it can go into, and it's been back and forth across the bed. And a lot of times, she keeps one of these shop towels, and she'll just wipe the bed down, uh -huh. knit some more, and wipe the bed yeah, down. It is necessary for the first little while of knitting. And it sure doesn't hurt the bed any to get it well lubricated with this LPS-1 or the HG, which is what I'm going to finish up with. FG. Isn't it FG? Yeah, food grade, yeah. When I, uh, I, get my, I get my anacronyms all messed up. The, the thing is that when I finished, as I reassemble, that's when I use the dry silicon spray to wipe, to spray them down the last time. And the and point of the dry silicon is it doesn't attract fibers, but it does right. lubricate. Yes. And it doesn't, you don't really see it on there, but it's on there. That's right. That back rail towards me, I can see a piece yep, of fuzz. I see a whole bunch of fuzz. Yep. But the, the point being, we wanted to cover how we use the Marvel Mystery Oil bath. It's not something you want to use as a lubricant on your machine, but it is the best way we have found to soak a carriage and really get it super clean.
I want to add a little something. If you have made the mistake of thinking it must be all purpose and you put some on the bed of the machine, I've done that too and the sky didn't fall. I didn't care for its performance and I cleaned it all off and life went on. So that's probably what will happen to you. It's not damaging but I don't think it's a good knitting lube. No, the best knitting lube is the uh, food grade silicon dry lube. It was the one that was recommended by my chemical engineers for the fact that it's non-tacking. It'll stay on the metal parts, but it won't attract the fibers that you're working with. And if you're really interested in the chemicals and why they were chosen, Jack has an entire video on his favorite chemicals. So you could look for that. If you're interested in disassembly, there are videos on the brother carriages, the studio carriages, and the garter carriage all separately. Um, the Passive E6000, talk about that for a minute, sweetie. Oh, yeah. There's a carriage that has an electronic eye on the back it's of it. called a lot. We pass lock. the headers have locks. Okay. The secret is knowing your carriages from your locks, but some of the electronic machines have a reader eye. It's an electronic eye that's sensitive to what the machine is telling it, and that must be cleaned. I don't recommend the electrical contact cleaner alone. Spray it down good so that there's no oil on it at all, no silicon on it at all. And then I recommend a good eyeglass cleaner. Whatever you would clean your eyeglasses with, or they make special little cloths for your microscopes. Anything for a real sensitive glass eye, that is what and you would clean. Long time pass up knitters traditionally have used only damp soft cloths with yeah. damp with water. I don't have an E6000 so I haven't faced that issue but that's traditional. Jack's done some deep cleanings as he described without problems but be very very careful of that reader eye because obviously if anything even grease occludes it it can't do its job. That's right it's only sensitive to a impulse going across that eye and so yeah if anything impedes that impulse it's only a momentary thing as it passes. Uh, but this is pretty much That's the, looking good. the process you're going to get for cleaning. And I'll actually go over this one one more time with the LPS one from different angles, which I can't show you on the camera, but I know where to look for inside of here especially. And I will operate this until it is like smooth as glass. And that one, because it was so dirty, we've been soaking it, is it as much as two weeks? Uh, I think ten days. And, and some I of the dirty garter carriages take a really long soak I to slowly did, work out the nastiness. I did suggest to a lady that said, it, well, actually, it's the pictures we were sent. And I said, that looks like a ten day soak if I've ever seen one. <laughs> so you can go look, I forget where you put that, but... It's actually on my Answer Lady face on, uh, page on Facebook. There's some pictures of a before machine that our friend was taking down to clean. And perhaps she'll be good enough to send me some afters. You could see the yellow goo that is so prevalent really gummed up in there. And the machine had not been mistreated. It just happens. And that machine is a poster child for dirty. <laughs>